Hello and welcome to Sound and Vision. I'm Rachel Ryan and today I am joined with Emma Crowder, a Rotherham-based singer-songwriter who will be discussing her career, her influences and her new EP, Seasons. Hi Emma. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Good. What I'd like to do is just start off with talking a little bit about why you decided to pursue a career in music. Um, I don't think it was anything that I ever really thought, oh yeah, right, this is definitely what I'm going to do. I've just always played gigs, written songs and done what I love and I've just got some really good feedback from it and I've kind of thought, oh, actually, maybe this is something that I could actually go somewhere with and it's kind of just gone from there, really. Well, when I first listened to your EP for the very first time, I instantly got reminded of um, artists like Kate Winslet and Gabrielle Applin. Do you have any musical influences that actually guide your music? It is funny you should say Gabrielle Applin, actually, because she's one of my biggest influences. Oh, wow. You can probably tell by listening to my music. Um, back when I was 14, I used to watch her on YouTube when she first started putting her covers up on there, and that's something that inspired me to put covers on, on YouTube. And then I'd say other artists, you know, like Eva Cassidy was a massive influence for me, uh, and then Lucy Rose, and then other, other female singer-songwriters, really. It sounds like you've got like, some really good sources that you've based your music on, considering how good you sound. Oh, thank you. So, as we all know, you've been quite busy with your recent EP yeah. launch. Um, would you like to just tell us a little bit about the response that you've got since releasing it? Yeah, um, it's been actually incredible, more than better than I could have ever imagined. Uh, I was a little bit sceptical actually with this being my first EP, so I've only ever put things out on SoundCloud, YouTube, etc. And we worked really hard in it, and obviously when you put in so much work for people to like it. So it went up for pre-order on iTunes, and then when it actually got released, um, I thought, it got released at midnight, I thought at oh, 4 o'clock in the morning, I wake up and I have a look on iTunes. It was it was number eleven in the charts. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. So that was absolutely incredible. I was so happy and the response has been really, really positive. I bet it has. Let's get it to number one, shall we? Oh that's what I was trying <laughs> to do, but it couldn't quite get higher than uh, than Ed Sheeran and James Bay it was. That was him. Oh wow, well, well at least you're up there with the top <laughs> with the top artists. So now we're going to play a VT from your actual EP launch Brilliant. down at the Rocking Chair Club in Sheffield. <laughs>
like it went absolutely amazing. It was so much fun. And it looks like you were absolutely loving it as well. Oh gosh, I can't even explain. <laughs> Would you like to just tell us a little bit more about the EP launch and how you think it went? Yeah, uh, well it was my first headline gig with the full band and I think there was quite a lot of pressure obviously with being the headline artist and it, it being coming off the back of the EP. Um, and I was quite worried about no one turning up apart from my mum and dad, so I put the tickets on sale and uh, we actually sold it out within um, before two weeks to go um, and they were not on the door which was the best feeling ever, you know, thinking that so many people wanted to come and watch. Um, there was two support artists, Ash Holland from the Retells and a guy called Davey Wilson, two acoustic artists who were amazing, really got the crowd going and then we did a 45 to 50 minute set Everything went smoothly. The, the response from the crowd was was brilliant, and it was it was a really really fun night. I just want to do it again and again and again. And again. <laughs> Hopefully, you will be doing. Yeah, soon. yeah, it's the start of something, definitely. Did you feel a bit like you was in your comfort zone or out of your comfort zone? Like, what was the feeling that you got from it? It was a little bit out of my comfort zone because I've been performing for years on my own, just with an acoustic guitar, you know, really chilled. And there was uh, there was quite a lot, you know, to think about rather than just thinking about what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, before I've never had to worry about timing or tempo or you know what everyone else is doing. But it was it was great as well. It it brought a whole new kind of angle to the songs, and it's it's great being on stage with other people as well. You really 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 enjoy it. It was so much fun. It looks like you were having so much fun yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, another thing that I just wanted to move on to talk about was the themes of your music. I mean, a lot of people don't really know what to base their music on or how to write a song. So what would you say your themes are throughout your music? Um, I'd say I tend to write from personal experience. I find it difficult to, to write what someone else is feeling and I think it's easier you know, coming from, from yourself. I don't think there's any particular theme. Um, I mean, my, my music, listening to the EP, if you listen to the lyrics, it's probably like reading one of my diaries from the past four years, so you kind of get to know these things that have happened in my life and that have inspired me to write a song. And I feel like as what's important to me changes, my songs change and my music grows as I grow as a person, and the things that really influence me obviously change, and then you can see the music changing as well. I bet writing your own stuff as well, off own experiences, I bet you can really, I bet like other people could really relate to the way that you write as well. Does that help with your writing, do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's really nice when people come up to me and like, oh, this reminds me of my ex-boyfriend or my friend or something like this, and I totally understand how you feel. And I really like that about songs. I mean, there's so much music where um, we're writing metaphors and you have to think, you know, oh, what's this song about? But I really like it when it, comes across in my lyrics what I'm feeling other people can think oh yeah I've actually been through that too and I think that's what kind of brings the people who listen to it and yourself closer together yeah. and I think that's why people like the stuff that you write. Yeah definitely. So thank you so much for taking the time to answer our questions so far. Uh, I believe you're going to be performing two of your original songs yes, from your yes. EP. Um, before we start though, would you like to just tell us a little bit about the songs? Yep, so um, the first song is called Back Home and it was inspired by a long distance relationship um, and then I still feel the second song, as morbid as it sounds, it's about being in a relationship where you love someone but you don't know if you're in love with them anymore and you're questioning the whole relationship and you don't know what to do and you feel a bit stuck. So yeah, that's the second one. Wow, well I'm really looking forward to hearing them. Would you like to make your way over to the stage? Yep. Times like this when I wish I could fold over a map and hop from place to place. Pretend like there's no vast station, no sea of blue, so I can see. Your face, your face at 
travel on the clouds who wouldn't charge pounds just to get to you a magic cup with a first class seat and plenty of room for your feet but i see you miss a view for your window it seems so Charge pounds just to get to you. A magic cup with a first class seat and plenty of room for your feet. But I still miss the view for your window. It's the sun on your skin, the light that you know back home. Charge pounds just to get to you. A magic cup with a first class seat and plenty of room for your feet. But I see a miss of you for your window. It's the sun on your skin, the light that you know back home.
Thank you, Emma. That was two absolutely stunning performances. Oh, thank you. And it looks thank like you, you really love what you do oh, as definitely. well. I definitely really enjoyed that. One thing that I did really want to talk about is uh, the way that you write your music. I mean, people that are just starting off, they kind of struggle sometimes to find a starting point or something to even write about or where to start. So, how would you say that you'd describe your writing process? Um, I wouldn't say there's any set way, really. Um, I think I tend to write from my personal experiences a lot. So if there's you know, a certain way that I'm feeling, writing it down helps. And it's kind of a way of, of therapy as well. Um, I, one thing I would say is that you know, to, to record every little idea you get, whether it's on the bus or anything like that, if a tune comes into your head, get that down, record it on your iPhone. Also, if I have any lyric ideas, then I'll write them down. And then it's just kind of a case of bringing them together I wouldn't say there's any set way in terms of, oh, I'll sit down and think, I'm going to write a song today, I'm going to write mm. these lyrics today, I'm going to do this today, because it doesn't work like that. Um, I think every song, every song has been different in the way that I've written it. Some have taken 15 minutes, some have taken 15 months, and it's just, it's just a case, you know, of, of seeing what works, works for you, really, but uh, personal experience, and that, that really helps. It sounds a bit like sometimes being a musician could probably get quite stressful. Would you say that there's any bad points and worse and good parts about being a musician? Um, the best part, I'd say, is the feeling you get when you're on stage, the absolute buzz. There's no feeling like it. Um, 
and you know when you, you come off stage you get good feedback or and people are, are deadly silent and listening to you and it's, it's the best feeling in the whole world. On the flip side of that I think when you're starting out and you're looking for gigs in pubs and you're playing in a dingy pub on a Friday night and there's there's groups of lads drinking Jaeger bombs and chanting all this stuff and they're just not listening to you and you're like, you know what, this is not even worth it because no one's hearing what I'm, I'm playing but I think you're always going to have gigs like that, every musician's got to start somewhere. I mean look at Ed Sheeran, like how many gigs he played, he probably played in bars similar to that um, but you know once you get yourself established it's fine but in terms of any major bad points then there's nothing that really pops into my head but again that feeling that you, you get when you're on stage is nothing that compares and it makes it all worth it. Well I bet it's just as good having a band behind you as well to support you throughout all that. Where did you all meet and yeah? It's, um, it's a weird one actually um, because we recorded the EP with a full band we wanted to have the full band for the launch as well because we wanted it to sound as similar as possible. Um, so the guys that are in my band, I already knew most of them. Say so they already play in a band around Sheffield um, and I've met them through some friends and they said, oh, we'd really like to do something different, a new project, let's all meet up, uh, play f for a few things. So we did, we all met up down at a practice room uh, in Callum Island and I actually recruited a, a keys player, which I was really worried about finding actually because there's not many decent keyboard players um, around. And it was actually one of my uni friends from Birmingham that tagged him in it. And oh, we've never met him before. And he came down as well. And we all just clicked, practiced in that room, um, developed the songs, and then obviously played the EP launch, played some gigs after that. And then we're hoping you know, to carry on to playing gigs together and writing together as well. We just said that you've built quite a good connection with all the band members now then? Yeah, definitely. On a, on a personal level, level and on a musical level as well, because I think when you write on your own, you set, not, not, not necessarily set in your ways, but you have your own style. And then we kind of bounce ideas off each other and they'll say to me, I don't know, what about doing that? Or we'll say, we don't quite like that, this would work better. Or what about this chord? And it kind of, it, it develops the music and it makes it the best it could be. And we all really get on well with each other. I think that shows on stage as well that we, we all have that, that kind of connection there. But it's, it's really fun playing with the band. It's, it's ever so lonely on stage now and oh, it's just me. <laughs> bless you. It's great to hear that you've actually got a really good connection with them though. Sometimes you can't get that with bands. Yeah, so you're definitely. you're quite lucky in that respect. Definitely. So, obviously, due to the EP being launched, I bet it's been quite hectic and quite busy. What would you say that your short-term and long-term plans are for the future? Short term, um, basically getting out of Sheffield, organising gigs in cities. I mean, we're in the process of organising a tour at the moment around the UK, so it's just widening the audience, really. Um, mid to short term, second EP, definitely. I've been writing new songs for that, I've got so many ideas, and that's hopefully going to be starting to record that this year. And then long term, it's just, I think, just riding the wave. The long term life goal would be to quit my day job to pursue a career in music and be able to, you know, live off music and do something that I love 24 7 rather than having to work the day job and do the music on the side, really. Well, I'm sure that you're going to succeed in everything that you do oh, as well. I hope so, thank you. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for today, but thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure to and listen to you. Thank you for you. having me. You're welcome. So thank you to you also at home. I hope you enjoyed the edition of Sound and Vision and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.